What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode here on the Pool Focus Podcast. I'm Quinn, and today's guest is an amazing artist out of Fairmont, West Virginia, which is, uh, he's also the founder of his own video production company, a founder of a film festival, and overall just a great family man that juggles art and family. So without further ado, welcome Ben Barry. How are you doing, man? Doing good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, heck yeah. Uh, so... Ben, you and I, we know each other, um, as I think it's going on like probably five to six years now. Yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy. We, um, I was up in Philippi mm-hmm. and, um, just North. Yep. And I think that's, I, I forget kind of how we kind of like stumbled up on each other's. Yeah. Like, I think we got connected by like a mutual friend. I yeah. just remember you were doing like higher ed content and really like uh, I want to, I want to do more. I, yeah. I want more out of, out of life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was 2019 was a interesting time yeah. for me overall and stuff yeah. I feel like, but, um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, kind of like let the audience know what you do, yeah. um, what your passions are, you know, how long you've been doing it, you know, the whole spiel, yep. I guess, you know? So. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, so Mountaincraft is a commercial video production company. Like that's that's my day job, and the origin of that was started 11 years ago. Actually, let's we'll go back a little further. Like I think I got my start in video like a lot of creators. I was running around as a kid with a camcorder, yeah. um, making videos, dragging my friends along, making them make fake music videos, like the, all all the normal filmmaker stuff. Um, and then in high school, a guidance counselor pulled me aside and was like, "Hey." like she knew that I had done video and had watched me making videos in the parking lot at school and all this stuff. And she's like, you know, you can do this for a career if you want. And that was the first time I was what, probably 17 at the time that I had even remotely considered that being like a part of my future. Yeah. Um, and so from there I started planning on going to film school, but, um, so I went to high school in Alabama, born and raised in Missouri moved to Alabama, went to high school, and then um, my parents were getting ready to move to West Virginia. And I was like, I'm not moving to West Virginia. I don't know anything about it. I don't want to move to a new state. Like, my plan was to move back to Missouri because that's where, like, from till age 16, that's where I grew up. Yeah. Um, And so my parents were like, well, just come to West Virginia, see the area, see the people, meet, you know, see the house, and then, you know, in a couple weeks, you can move back to Missouri. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. So I'm, I came up here and literally within the first week I met my now wife. Uh, We hit it off amazingly. She's born and raised in Fairmont. Um, and so that relationship started quickly led into marriage. And so for me, my mindset changed from like, okay, I I was going to pursue film. Well, now I need to get a real job. That's, that was the mindset I need to provide for family. Um, and so did some odd jobs here and there worked at hardware store, did some other like normal stuff. And then I remember being in the interview process for this recycling plant that's near Fairmont. Yeah. And it was a good paying job, like a good paying hourly job had benefits. Like, and I was like, this is, I need to do this. Like I need to just provide for my family. This is what I'm going to do. So I was in the interview. I made it through all the rounds and I was almost to the end. Um, and I was pretty, pretty much a shoe in to get the job. And, the final interview was with a guy that was a family friend of my wife's. And I remember distinctly him being in that interview and he turned off the recorder or whatever they did for the interviews. And he looked at me and he's like, they wouldn't want me to tell you this, but like, you shouldn't take this job. <laughs> and I was like, uh, what, what do you mean? Why? And he's like, I've looked at your resume. I know you, you know, just through the family. And he's like, you have a talent for this video stuff and you have a drive there. Don't settle. Yeah. Don't take this job. So I went home that evening and told my wife what happened. And I was like, I mean, this feels like one of those crossroad moments that I really need to like think about. And so she was super supportive. My family was super supportive. And they're like, hey, if you want to if you want to do this, let's do it. Um, And so we had two kids at the time. And so I jumped into school and I did it online, um, which was great because I was able to work and do school. Um, But very quickly in school, I realized that I didn't want to get finished with school and work for someone else. Yeah. I wanted to get finished with school and start my own thing, whatever that was. Yeah. So while I was in school, I used a lot of the school project opportunities as time to do free projects for businesses in the area. So that was like the genesis of Mountain Craft. That was 11 years ago. 
And it just got me started learning the business side of things. Like I was able to do free projects. So that's an easy entry and talking to businesses and like getting my, my feet wet and all that. But, um, graduated from, uh, college and already kind of had like the semblance of something started. Um, and from there, it's just been like this 11 year journey of figuring out what not to do (laughs) a lot of that. Um, and then really figuring out that I wanted to do video production. Yeah. Cause in the beginning, um, definitely there was that temptation of like, Oh, I'll, I'll shoot this wedding here. I'll design this website here. I'll do this, whatever. And quickly realized that I didn't want that. And that I was going to take this path of like just doing video production. So the last 11 years I've just been, you know, perfecting that craft, learning, making mistakes, you know, learning from other peers, learning from other people that are super talented, both in state and out of state. And like, honing our ability to work with clients and only do video because that's a pretty unique like proposition like there's a lot of companies and especially a lot of creatives that do multiple things um and we were like no we're just gonna do video and so that's 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 what we focus on yeah i think that's uh that's that's awesome to know like i feel like you gotta have that type of crossroad like you was talking about is like if you recognize that mm-hmm. and figure out okay this is going to be the next step into it and, yeah um, i mean i don't i'd all but given up at that yeah. point like really like yeah. i was like i'm gonna get a normal job nine to five and i like and it was that moment where it's just like it's like i could not ignore the flashing sign yeah. in the road that's like oh i need to reconsider you know this 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 path that i'm on and like should I, while I'm young, make this pivot? Um, and sitting here, I'm so thankful I did, but there was, there's scary moments. You know, there's, there's a lot of, I'm not going to make it yeah. moments. Uh, a lot of sitting in an office with no clients and being like, what am I doing? You know, when do I shut this down? Um, I'll, you know, I, I'm sure any business owner can, can relate to those kind of feelings. Yeah, I definitely, I know I can. Like I, I just recently put out like a, it was a six month, uh, reflection on my Facebook mm-hmm. post and I was talking about like just some of the simple things that I've learned is just you know like on the business side of things no one tells you how to do you know you know taxes mm-hmm. or like you know so like I wanted to make sure I got an accountant I want to make yep. sure I did this I also wanted to know that there was going to be like personal time for myself yep. um, I just recently took a vacation you know and it was just like I, you felt you felt kind of like guilty at it but then it's just like I don't know it's just one of those things that you have to figure out the work balance. Yep. Um, I used to edit like sometimes like I would edit to like one o'clock at night. Yeah. And then now I'm just like, and you know, you know, if it's like past nine, Mm -hmm. I am tired. I'm going to bed. I'm not going to like, you know, go into it. And I I don't want to wake up the next day or go to a shoot not prepared. Like Mm -hmm. I want to make sure like I got everything good that way. Like you always have like the uh, nightmare of like going to the shoot and you don't have an SD card or yeah. your battery right. or something like that. Yep. And that's only happened to me once. And yeah. I don't want to like continue that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Well, I mean, the, um, the work-life balance, I think it's huge for business owners. Um, and I really think, you know, I didn't do that great of a job. Um, actually, COVID was kind of like the light bulb moment for me because, um, you know, the world shut down and work shut down. Um, and while it was a scary time as a business owner on the family side, it was a really unique time where for two months, like there was nothing to do, but spend time with my family. And I'm so thankful. Like we had, we have a little bit of land. And so we weren't like cooped up in just like a small house or whatever, but like we just got to spend time together, like unadulterated, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, because there was nothing else, like there was nothing else yeah. to focus on. Yeah. Um, and I think it really made me reconsider and reevaluate the importance of things. Yeah. Like work is important if you're a business owner, um, you know, answering emails, communication, like all this stuff that comes along with owning a business. But family is so important and like, and that, or whatever your time away from work is so important. And to be able to like, I take that step back and like look at it and be like, Hmm, I'm going to reevaluate how I'm planning my time. Cause that, that was my biggest thing, right? Yeah. Is I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a procrastinator and a little bit of like just fly by the seat of my pants. So it's like my schedule was whatever was happening at that moment. Yeah. Um, and I think since then 
you know, I've really gotten help from different people, both my wife at home and then at work of like creating this structure where there's definitely a lot of time to work and you are going to have that as a business owner. You're going to have 80 hour weeks. Like that's just part of it. But there's also very specific time to like shut work off and just focus on the family or, you know, reorganize stuff and go to my daughter's dance recital or reorganize stuff and go to my son's basketball game. And like that, that's just been a, a real big revelation for me. I would say over the last four years is just really honing in on that. And there, like, there is a uh, there's a balance to it, right? Because you can over you can overdo yeah. the the too much time away from work because yeah. work you know you need to be working. But like, I think just having that mentality of like focusing and like thinking and like just prioritizing your time is really big. Um, but, and even in like work too, um, I have a friend and a business coach that asked me a question like a month or so ago. And he was like, how much time do you spend thinking about the business? Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was just like, just sitting, planning, like thinking about things, like not doing anything, just spending time thinking. And I was like, uh, zero negative yeah. 10, like yeah. not at all. Yeah. And it was just one of those things that hit me, like even inside work, especially I think as creatives, you've got to plan that time to like be strategic and think and plan and like recharge, you know? Cause like what you were talking about, about making mistakes, going to a shoot and forgetting something like that's an element of like, you probably didn't listen to your body and get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. You, because you didn't get enough sleep, you woke up late and you didn't have that extra hour to like prep gear right. or you were so tired the night before you forgot to put it on charge. And it's like, it's those little things like as a business owner, you have to like find that balance. You have to listen to your body. You have to listen to your mind. You have to yeah. listen, you know, your mental health and like figure out everybody's different, right? Like some people, maybe they work all night and that works for them and that's great. Like everybody's schedule is different, but like find a balance that is a healthy part of all yeah. of those things. Yeah. I know, um, just the organization I think is one thing that I've kind of like, um, established, tr well, tried to establish yeah. more of, cause like I had, I'm be honest with you, like my office at home was, it was a mess when I first started, <laughs> but I bought, uh, some serious like shelves. Yep. I, I, each shelf is like a different platform. I have my batteries on one. I have, you know, my gear, my SD cards, and then I got like drone and yep. I just kind of like, I build it that way. That way I know that, okay, after I'm plugging everything in, mm -hmm. I'm making sure everything's charged that yep. way it's all good. But yep. that has been very helpful. Yep. Um, just trying to find, I mean, I bought a Mac off of one of my other photographer friends because mm -hmm. I wanted to, um, have kind of like, uh, cause I have my, like the PC that I like edit and stuff. Mm -hmm. on. It's also the one that I game and I just feel like there's too much temptation of like, oh yeah, well let me just hop on something real quick. And then you realize <laughs> you got like five hours onto a game that you're what just happened? like, I was supposed to do something. Yep. So I bought this and it's been really good because I do all of my video work on this one. Yep. And what's really good about it is um, I am only working on one monitor. So yep. I can't have, you know, Spotify. I can't have Discord. I can't mm -hmm. have all this other stuff. I yep. mean, and then I'm giving myself a break. I'm just like, okay every 20 minutes or something, then I check my phone. Yep. Just kind of like do your basic stuff. Yep. But that has been, um, I had a couple of my buddies, uh, they all work from home and mm -hmm. we, we was always in discord and they was like, where you been at, uh, for this last week? I was like, no, I'm trying to get myself into this mode of, okay, from eight to noon, mm -hmm. I'm working on that, on that computer yep. to get work done. And then I'm hopping over on this one because yep. they're all like built into like an L shape yep. anyway. So it's just like, it's not like I'm going far. I'm literally going a couple of feet, right. but I'm trying to establish myself as like, okay, I got to get invoices out. I got to do yeah. this. I got to do that and stuff. I mean, that's probably the hard, like one of the hardest things about owning a business is like, there's nobody to tell you what to do. Like, no, and that, yeah. that goes for like procrastination or for like not getting stuff done. Like nobody's going to tell you to send your invoices out, you know, yeah. like you're the business owner. And so finding that like structure that helps you be efficient and helps you, you know, get what you need done. Because I think too, a lot of people waste a lot of time. And like, yeah. if you can get into a routine and be efficient, you'll find, you'll find time that you didn't know you had. And you can put that towards free time. You can put that yes. towards family time. You can put that towards, you know, playing yeah. video games, like whatever it is, like 
the the more you kind of block things out and organize things i think a lot of people I, at least for me like i found time that i was didn't even realize i was wasting because yeah. i just wasn't paying attention yeah I, I would always like wake up and um i started my day like i'm trying to start a lot earlier yep. because um i just sleep is fine like right. you can get enough sleep but it's like it. I was sleeping in like the first two months, yeah. sleeping until like ten thirty. Yeah. Then hopping on. I didn't find myself productive until like four o'clock. Yep. Then I found myself as soon as I got into a groove. Well, I had a shoot later that night yep. at like golden hour. Yep. So I had to go for that. And then yep. by the time I come home, it's nine o'clock. Yep. Day's gone. Yep. And then I'm just like, uh. So like, I mean, yesterday I woke up at seven. Yep. Uh, woke up before my wife, and she was like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I'm editing. I got to get in. I'm I'm into it. I yep. feel good." I had no need for me to be on my phone or just try and sleep in, yep. you know, like I went straight into it. I edited, uh, two galleries and then, uh, they're being sent out tomorrow. I'm just yep. putting final touches on, but I did that before I went and did another shoot at two o'clock. Yep. So I'm just like, okay, I feel good. I'm not like, I didn't waste it. I felt fresh. Yep. I mean, um, you also, when you're like working on stuff and then you go to a shoot, you feel more creative of knowing mm -hmm. like what to like kind of fix and things. And oh, stuff yeah. Too. Yeah. I mean, so, I think the whole idea of like taking breaks and recharging and relaxing, whether it's a day, whether it's a vacation, whether it's whatever, like as a creative, you, you are more yeah. creative. Like you are more, you're more engaged, you're more passionate, you're more you're just generally creative when you're coming up with ideas or doing whatever. And it's like that's your body functioning the way it should yeah. and like yeah. not having that burnout but again i mean it's it's a whole juggle and for me it's like i think i've seen like my life go through seasons because like having a family on top of owning a business it's like a it's a whole rodeo that like has to be like yeah. figured out and we also homeschool our two kids on top of all that so like i have to fit in running a business and having free time with the family and like school planning and all yeah. that, like it, within a, within the confines of a week and spending time with my wife, like finding time where we can just like have time. And so it's like, you know, I have to be on a pretty strict schedule. And at first I hated it. Right. I felt very constricted. I felt like it was like, oh, this is this is awful. But what I found is like there's a freedom in knowing that your week is kind of planned out. And again, because your week's planned out, you find this extra time and yeah. you're able to then apply it into like a certain like, oh, I, I want to spend more time with the kids. I have a little bit extra time. This shoot got canceled or whatever. Um, and so it's just been, it's been a really freeing process for me to like, and like we've done things too, where it's like, we'll try something like we, for a while, like almost a year, me and my wife were getting up at five and we would go work out and then come home and then start our day. And like, it was good. But we also found that like we were very tired and it yeah. was like that didn't really work out. So now like we don't get up as early, but like I'll fit in a workout like in the evening, like right after dinner, I'll go do a quick workout, take a shower and then we'll hang out with the kids for the rest of the evening. So it's like it's it's all about finding that balance, right. finding what season you are in life, what's going on and then finding a flow that doesn't feel stressful and doesn't feel like overwhelming and again giving yourself time to do every you know each part of your life yeah uh one guy that i really want to kind of like shout out now he's not in west virginia but he's he's out of um austin um i follow his work a lot he's um him and a group of creatives is mm -hmm. scott simmons he always posts um he does you know he he posts a lot of stuff that um is very motivational for like creatives and mm -hmm. things like that probably like 80% of his work you don't even see because yep. he works behind the scenes on his own. Um, he does like a protein cookie mm -hmm. brand and they're like, they're doing great. Yeah. He does a, his wife's fitness app. Mm -hmm. um, but he's like in this, like, you know, Austin's type of um, audience is completely different than West Virginia. So like, but he is always posting about like these, you know, mental, you know, mindsets of like yep. where you got to be at and, and stuff. And I think that's like where I got a lot of, input of just like okay well i need like i need to do this i need to get a little bit scheduled out and stuff yep. and um it's been very helpful and i don't know i feel like in west virginia though it's like not very many people communicate that very well mm -hmm. and stuff um or yeah. if they do i just maybe i'm just not not comprehending it as i mean well I, stuff, I think but. everybody finds their own way but i mean I, for me i really like being an entrepreneur and starting my own business like i just i 
I have a certain problem. Like I don't have a problem with working hard, right? I don't have a problem with like really putting in 110% effort, but this idea that we always have to be grinding, we always have to be like have a side hustle. We always have it like we're in this ASAP culture and it's like we, I really have tried to like reel back from that. Now that doesn't mean that I'm not responsive. That doesn't mean that we're not communicative as a business. That doesn't mean that we're not getting projects done on time. But it means we're taking a step back and like I tell my team all the time, like I want to be a human centric company. Like most companies out there are not built for humans. If you really think about it, they're built for robots and that's what they churn out. It's a churn and burn. Um, But for us, I really I want to be a human company where like we're being realistic about timelines. We're being realistic about, you know, how are we responding? We're being realistic about work will be there when you get back. Like all of those things that I think as a culture we've lost and we've like, we idolize this, like, you know, 24 hour grind, like we're, we're all, but it's like, that's not sustainable. Like that's not actually realistic. And then on top of that, if you do have a family or a hobby or a something outside of work, like, and you're doing, you're treating work, you know, going at it a million miles an hour, like all that other stuff is going to suffer. You know, it, you have to find for me, it's like a balance you have to find that sweet spot. Um, and again, for everybody, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. It's great points. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good, that's 21 minutes, right? Cool. So that's good. I'm going to do a question that way I get it and then don't worry about answering it, but I'm just going to, cause, uh, the next point you talk about like your clients and stuff like that. So I'm going to say something along the lines like, uh, so Mountaincraft is, you know, a video production company, you know, um, you guys deal with what I have seen is like more commercialized, blah, yep. blah, blah. I can and actually then, answer the question if you want, because I think I can do it more succinctly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll talk about our client demographics yeah. and that a little bit more. Yeah. So go into like your client demographics yep. and then we'll just kind of like go from there because yep. that should give us the next eight minutes right Perfect. there. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, uh, founder of mountain craft production is more of a video production company. Uh, you only kind of do video, but I've, what I've seen is like, is based on like commercials. You've worked with tourism. You've worked with, uh, you know, um, the visitor bureau, like for, for like Marion County, mm-hmm. I believe, and, and things like that. Um, go ahead and tell like the audience a little bit about like the type of work that you kind of like you guys dive into and like your own personal like niche. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, so we're, we're a commercial video production company. Um, and we actually call ourselves a creative studio because on top of the normal video production stuff, we also do a lot of agency S stuff. We do a lot of pre-production, a lot of producing script writing, concepting, yeah. like a lot of that stuff that you'd get from an agency. But again, it's only seen through the vision of like the video side yeah. of stuff. So, but our, our entire clientele is, uh, it's, uh, commercial corporate, like B2B type, you know, work. Um, and you know, we decided that early on that that was kind of going to be our platform. And so we have, yeah, we have clients in state. We've worked for a bunch of different people, like from West Virginia lottery. Um, we worked for what was the DHHR. I don't know what their name is now, but like, so on the state level, and then we've done, you know, a lot of work with like local businesses and storytelling there. Um, and then we've gotten recently, we've gotten a lot of, or a few federal clients. Um, and so they're, you know, mostly focused on the, um, recovery and the, the opioid issues. And so that's allowed us to travel nationwide. Yeah. Um, we've been all over the nation with them and that's a really fun, very impactful, meaningful, um, side of the clientele. And then I would say the other biggest chunk is working with agencies. And so that's kind of like our bread and butter um, is finding agencies that do all the other stuff. They do marketing, they do websites, they provide everything else and then they need the video aspect. And then that's where we get to come in um, and really, that's our sweet spot really because that's working with another business but another business that is providing a greater overall marketing strategy to a client. Yeah. Um, and so working with agencies, that's, that's how we worked with the lottery. That's how we work with DHHR, but it's also allowed us to work with, um, VRBO. It's allowed us to work with Exxon Mobil, GE. Um, there was a, a, smoothie or a juice company out of Charlotte called clean juice that we did some national campaigns for. And like 
all of that work stems through our, yeah. our relationship with the agency. So that's like, that's our biggest thing. And that's kind of what we're focusing on as we move forward is like, we'll still do the B2B stuff when it comes available, but like really focusing on the agency work and like being that video production partner for them. Yeah, I love that. I see. Okay, so I want to do that on a much, 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 much smaller level. Yeah. So I think I've been trying to do that with small businesses. Yep. I've created like a small proposal. I just worked with a salon um, yesterday. Yeah, 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 yesterday. And um, I'm creating a 60 second like commercial for mm -hmm. them. And then all headshots, photography, and like yep. we just kind of like the, the, the way I, my mindset is, is that these small businesses that don't have like, they don't even have a marketing person. Yep. What I learned at my previous uh, experience with tourism is like you're working with clients like new uh, like Ace Adventure. Mm -hmm. You're working with the Greenbrier, and then you're working with somebody that owns one cabin, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, so like yeah. you're working with thirty people down to one yep. very quickly. Yep. And I, what I saw was like the people that was just working by themselves. They're the owner, the operator, all this stuff is that you know they don't even know how to make a Facebook page. Yep. They don't know how to do you know, just a simple, you know, post or recycle content or anything yep. like that. And it's nothing against them. It's just no, something that's just never been provided in a yeah, sense. Totally. So I'm trying to, like, I would love to work more on smaller businesses. See, like, I don't ever see myself. I don't want to touch those types of clients that you just kind of, like, named in a sense. Don't say never. You never know. I don't know if I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's, well... Right now, it might be stressful. By myself. You never I know. would say by myself. Yeah. If I right. had a team, yeah. like you, I think it'd be completely right. different. Right. Oh, geez. No, it just stresses me. I just <laughs> like kind of thinking about it. Like, it would just me. But like, um, I like that just that one on one yeah. kind of conversation because it's amazing what just one good photo can do for like a small business. Oh, yeah. You know, whether it's a good headshot. I, I worked with a boutique earlier this uh, month uh, out of Roan County. Yeah. They was doing a grand reopening, and it was a mutual friend. And I said, "Hey, I'll give you like a kind of like discount, but this would be a great opportunity to show that you guys are reopening, mm -hmm. and then we can like support you. Have all photo like great photos of the event, yep. headshots, and I'll do some like just basic stuff of just like you know talk." And I started talking to them. They was like, "Well, we do this, we do that." I was like, well, "Let's take photos of it. Yep. Like I'm here. Let me help." You know, yep. and they was like, "Well, is that going to be more?" I was like, "No, like." use me in a sense mm -hmm. you know and um there's so much of it that you know you start talking to them you see the gears start moving you see yep. them but no one's had like that kind of like that business marketing strategy that's formed and maybe if they maybe they have but they haven't actually had that conversation i think maybe yep. it's like oh well they don't fit into the group of like a workshop mm -hmm. or like a like a biz like a chamber or yeah. anything like that you know and I know I personally, like as a business owner, I don't feel like I should be at like some meetings mm -hmm. or something like that. I just don't feel like I would fit in that, yeah. you know, vibe and stuff. Right. But there's so much that you can learn from it. And, um, but I'm just like, you know, there's a coffee shop, there's this, there's so many of these small businesses that are just like, yeah, let's get a headshot a couple, you know, and let's not break the bank in mm -hmm. a sense. But yeah. if I do like 10 of those in a month, yeah, that adds up yeah, and definitely. I'm good. And, yeah. Well, um, and that that's exactly why we work with agencies is because there is a, they have a lot of clients because yeah. they provide a lot of different services so they can scale like right. all the way down to that small business that just needs a little thing all the way up to this huge business that needs everything. And so for us only offering video, yeah. it's really advantageous for us to find those partners that do a lot of stuff and have a lot of different touch points. Yeah. Cause like even with a big business in state, they might do video three times a year, yeah. maybe. Um, yeah. And so like there, that's three different touch points that we have versus an agency. You're going to do photos. You're going to yeah. do a website. You're going to do social media management. You're going to do video. You're going to do. And so it's like all these consistent touch Just points. email marketing. Exactly. All, all of it. And, and so, so like creating yeah. those relationships with those agencies has allowed us to, you know, create this list of a fewer contacts that ha that are working right. with all of these clients. Cause I don't need to own the client at the end of the day. Like yeah. I would much rather have a good relationship with the yeah. client, even if they're, you know, a client of yeah. someone else's. And so we've, we've really enjoyed being like, I, I tell people a lot of times, like we provide a piece of the marketing puzzle. We yeah. don't provide the whole puzzle. Yeah. We look for partners that provide most of the puzzle and then are just looking for our puzzle piece, which is commercial video production. No, I love that. That's uh 
Well, and I think uh, a lot of people too, they, they look at it and um, they don't understand that right now, if you look in the last just five years and stuff, you know, we went from COVID into a video heavy mm-hmm. type of field yep. really quick, you know, yep. vertical content, yep. just in general. Just any content. Yeah. And, you know, video is king right now. And then they see, I mean, Instagram, you post a photo, you get nothing. You post a reel. Yeah. You get so much more interaction from people. You're like, who the heck is this? Right. You know, and why is it posting? You yep. know? And that's why, like, I wanted to focus more on, like, YouTube. I wanted to focus more. Uh, so, like, the two that I'm focused on right now is Instagram and Facebook. Yep. I'm trying to post, you know, as much as I can on those and really create a platform. Yep. Facebook's always going to be, like, a workhorse yep. for um, always showcasing stuff. Like, there's always just, like, it's just Facebook. Yep. I don't know how. Yeah. Twitter is Wild West. Can't get nothing on that ever since Elon bought that thing. Um, and then now I'm starting to like kind of like post more on threads. Yep. And, and, um, but TikToks, TikToks just, it's a wild west too. Yeah. Like it sometimes I had one hit 10K views, which is like awesome. It's my That's first awesome. one. But it was, it was something that was basic. And, uh-huh. was, and it wasn't even something that I like wanted to like, really showcase yeah. you know and then i'm stuck in this like 300 view like plateau and i'm just like yeah it's so weird yeah. it's so weird how those things hit but like no video right now is definitely king and yep. it's like uh you're kind of like in a good mindset of just like okay well this is exactly what we're going to offer the only thing we're going to offer and then i love how you just kind of like said we're like the the next piece in the you know of the puzzle yeah. and stuff and um a lot of people like um if they recognize it they'll understand exactly what the value is right um we i know when i was at glimbo we kind of talked about on some of the like projects it's yeah. like i would love to have you guys do so many documentaries mm-hmm. for like that the school yeah. and stuff and then put it on you know it should have happened in 150th year but that's yeah. a whole different conversation that could be a whole different <laughs> podcast but um part two yeah yeah for <laughs> sure um but there is such a cool story, you know, mm-hmm. with the whole Kim Stevens story. Yeah. Um, there's such a cool story within uh, the university as a whole. Yep. Um, and, you know, they have a small marketing crew. I yep. learned that when I was there. And it's just like we're doing so much advertising yep. that I don't think that other people is like, oh, well, they, if they put something out, they have to hire like a third party. Yeah. To right. do it and if i know if they're doing it you think about the other schools like you know that are you almost never hear about yep. you know right like, um so that your salems and your yep. bethany's and your smaller schools like that right. and there's so much i know in higher ed just because that's where my background is yep. and stuff but like there's so much content within higher ed oh yeah it's crazy. you got you know there's you got, so much video content yeah. out there and it's like and but it's neat like we've found even that we've gotten to collaborate even with other companies that even do video and they just want a certain aspect of what we bring for video production. So it's really been like a super collaborative process for us. And I love that. Like I love, you know, collaborating with all these creative companies and being able to, you know, and then, like I said, we still do B2B. Um, so we still work directly for some companies that have been our clients for a long time. Um, we recently just started getting back into music a little bit, which I'm yeah. really excited about. Um, there's a group called Born and Bred out of Shinston, West Virginia, that has a mission of uplifting all West Virginia artists. And so we're doing a, a fun little tiny desk concept yeah. uh, with them that'll be launching in the next couple of months. So it's like, it's really exciting and there's a lot of flexibility and there's a lot of fun in what we do, even though it is commercial video production. Yeah. yeah. So I mentioned earlier about you guys, um, the first year of it was last year. Yep. Um, it was the mountain craft film festival. Yep. Um, t- tell me literally everything about it. I, yeah. I followed, you know, outside. I couldn't do it. I, something was going on that weekend, I think. And, uh, I either had like two weddings or something yeah. booked or it might've been governor's conference. Yeah. Too? yeah I can't remember. You had something. There. I had you, something yeah. and I was, re- I was so upset or yeah. something. And, but um, it's it's such a cool concept. I yeah. don't know of anything else like that in West Virginia um, that I know of. Even yeah. when I worked at tourism right. uh, with the film office, you know, um, we would work on different things. But I I haven't seen anything like that. And I think it's going to be really good. Um, it introduced me to a lot of different 
um, artists that I didn't even know were aware of yeah, West Virginia. Right. And I watched a lot of it just kind of like behind the scenes. But like, yep. talk about the um, kind of like the beginning of that and yeah. how it went. And just, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think the film festival was born out of uh, fun relationships. Um, we have a friend, Jason Young. Um, that is the program director at the Robinson Grand Performing Arts Center in Clarksburg. Yeah. And we've been friends with him for a long time. He does so many amazing, like he's a creative force in West Virginia. And so we were talking to him one day and he was just like, do you guys want to do a film festival? And we were like, mm, like <laughs> that's not really in our, I mean, it sounds fun, but that's not like in our wheelhouse. Um, we've not done any like event based anything right um ever um but we we thought about it and you know we were like let's give it a shot like yeah. let, let's try this because as as filmmakers like our, our team of seven we all have some background in filmmaking so we've either done a short film been on a short film been on a feature worked on a feature and so like we have all had some interactions with film festivals. Um, and like for me, like I'm a huge supporter of West Virginia film festivals specifically. Um, cause I think we have, I, I can't remember the number. There's quite a few actually in state okay. that people don't know about. Yeah. I think there's like 20 or something oh, that wow. happened. Wow. So there's a lot, but they are, they aren't advertised very well. Um, and people don't know about them uh, that they exist. And so, um, are we they were like, like historical or like documentary? Type they're they're or? kind of all over the board. Oh, like okay. there's like there's the West Virginia International Film Festival that's in Charleston that has been running. Like they don't actually have a festival right now. They're getting ready to start that back up soon. But like they had an international film festival. Yeah. So films from all over. Um, you had the Filmmakers Fest in Sutton, West Virginia for years and years and years. Um, that's where I submitted my couple of first like film festival yeah. films. Um, and then like Huntington's got a really vibrant, uh, film festival scene right now. They have the Appalachian film festival. And then I think the queer film festival is in Huntington or Lewisburg somewhere, but like, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot, but they kind of exist in these pockets. And so we were like, well, let's, let's give it a shot. Like yeah. we were being offered this amazing venue. Let's try. And so for us, once we got started, you know, the first thing was like, well, we're we going to call it. Um, so we went through a ton of different names, like uh, area names. And what we landed on is the Mountain Craft Film Festival, which feels a little boring because it's like your name's Mountain Craft. That wasn't. But the reason we did it was for ease of branding, because we yeah. felt like we've spent the last 10 years building up this brand that is Mountain Craft. Why do we want to start all over on a whole right. nother brand? So we went with let's just go the Mountain Craft Film Festival yeah. um, and make it a little easier in the beginning, because what we were trying to do is juggle a full-time business with yeah. this side thing that we quickly figured out was a lot. Yeah. Um, and so that's where, why we landed on the name. Let's keep that brand synergy going. Let's like continue and be also because mountain craft, the mountain craft employees were, we're it like we're the people behind the scenes, right. you know, pushing everything forward. And so it's like, let's just keep it in that spectrum and let's, let's call it the mountain craft film festival. Um, and so last year was really about, figuring out what we could do. Um, and then also taking stock of like all the other film festivals that we've ever been to. Right. So we've been, I've been to a lot. Everybody else on the team has been to some and it's just like looking and taking bits and pieces of like, why did we like that one so much? What was interesting yeah. about that? And I think what we found in general is that a lot of smaller film festivals don't consider the greater event they start a film festival and they're like, okay, we're going to show 30 films or whatever, you know, 40 films in two days. And it's just back to back films. That's all it is. And that's it. That that's, that's the event that they plan. Well, for us, it was like, okay, well, what are people going to do in between? Yeah. Maybe let's have some food trucks so that yeah. people can get some food in between. What would people do when there's not a film screening? Well, maybe we could do a local art gallery. So we built, we brought a local artist in to you know curate a local art gallery right. on stage, and then we got in contact with a gentleman at WVU, David Smith, that was like he had this VR film. So it's like, what if we did a VR film installation? So we we did that, yeah. And then it's like, oh well, there's vendor, there's friends of ours that like vend. Let's do a vendor area. So like, 
we took the film festival as like the core and then we built out from that and like tried to make it an event that somebody would go to for a weekend and be able to spend time not just watching films but doing all kinds of other things um and i think that's really one of the things that like really helped us find success um in the first year but then the next hurdle was what is our film festival about? Yeah. Like we really wanted to have a mission. We really wanted to think we didn't just want to be another film festival floating out in the ether showing films. And so something that kind of comes naturally to us and that is near and dear to our hearts is the Appalachian region. Right. So we were like, okay, we're going to be an Appalachian only film festival. And so in order to submit a film or be in the festival, you either have to have be from the Appalachian region and make a film. So natively from the Appalachian region, you either have to have made the film in the Appalachian region, or it has to have really distinct Appalachian heritage values that we can see. That's like really distinct in it. So that allowed us to niche down our, our audience a little bit, but also it, we felt really excited about maybe being able to provide a platform for these Appalachian filmmakers that might not otherwise have a platform to showcase their film. So that was really important for us to find like what, you know, what's our mission? What's, what's kind of our rallying cry. And it it is the Appalachian region. We want to be the premier film festival in the Appalachian region, showcasing Appalachian artists and Appalachian filmmakers and providing a stage that like can catapult them onto other stages and to really just shine a spotlight yeah. um, on the talent that we feel is here that I think often gets overlooked. Um, and that's a super common theme in West Virginia and in the Appalachian region, but yeah. we we're like, let's try it with the film festival. Um, and so I think that that was neat to that, that. So we had our name, we had a rallying cry and our mission. And then, you know, the other thing that I, I have to shout out Jason again and the Robinson grand, because the venue that we have is one of the best in the state. I, I don't think we would be as successful as we are as a film festival without this venue. This is a hundred year old vaudeville style theater um, that has history all the way back to like silent films. They started showing yeah. silent films yeah. there. They were one of the first theaters in the U S to show talkies when they added sound to motion pictures. And so like rich history in film and then, and it's beautiful. Too. Oh, it's gorgeous. Like, and the, the city yeah. came in and they dumped millions of dollars into r- preserving yeah. and updating this venue. So you have a hundred year old theater that looks like a hundred year old theater, but operates like a modern day right. theater. So it sounds amazing. It looks amazing. And, um, and so what you get is this classic, you know, filmmaking experience where you're sitting in these red velvet chairs and you're Mm -hmm. watching movies on one single screen, you know, all facing the stage, but on the back end, top of the notch, uh, top notch, uh, electronics and like audio visual and like monitoring and like all the things that you would want as a film festival. So I just can't thank them enough for what they've done. Cause you know, on top of our staff, planning the film festival and getting everything ready during the festival it's their staff like they run the concessions for us they run the box office for us they run the sound booth for us like they provide not only an amazing venue to showcase these films but they also provide manpower and stuff and so to me it's just a really beautiful collaboration that's i think going to make the film festival successful for many years to come and do they get like proceeds or anything or is this just yeah so we we split the door with them that's that's kind of like how we how we uh engineered that partnership and it's great because as we promote the venue and the festival they're promoting the venue and the festival and it's mutually beneficial to both of us so both of us want to sell the theater out right you know and it creates this awesome collaboration where we're working in tandem um, for a business goal, but also for this creative, you know, collaborative process that we're both really excited to be yeah. you know, on the journey together. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I think that's such a great vision for the mission of it. And so yeah. too, I think, uh, there's, um, so much, if, if you just look at the history of like filmmaking in general, mm-hmm. like, as, you know, if, if you want to narrow it down to like West Virginia and stuff, like we're not in, there's like probably two maybe three movies that could give it into a positive light, mm-hmm. but we're always seen into this negative light. And then when yep. people get here, they're like, Oh, West Virginia is such a beautiful state. I was like, yep. yeah, yeah, it is. And it's and, full of talent. And it's full of talent. Yep. And I think it has, 
we're, we've been, we're still the underdog of every conversation. Yep. And I think that's what drives this whole reason of the whole podcast. Yep. And, you know, like I wanted to put, you know, people and, and have those conversations, yep. get them introduced to a different audience. You know, yep. I didn't see anyone kind of like doing this in a sense. Yep. It wasn't like jumping on to something. It was just like, oh, well, let me be the first yep. to kind of like get it started. If someone else does it yep. and they're continuing to do it, then I feel like I've, uh, been successful in my mission because yeah. I've inspired them to keep the conversation going. Yeah. Well, I and, and I mean, I think we, we feel the same way in the film. Like I said, there's a lot of other film festivals in the state and we are hopefully very quick to promote and to yeah. uplift. Like we are not in competition with any other film festival in the state. Yeah. We are in collaboration with every other film festival because we need to grow the entire interest in film festivals. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the best way we see to do that is to promote across the board. Like right. we do not want to be the only film festival in West Virginia. Um, we have lofty goals and we have very specific things that we want to achieve, but we want to promote everyone else along the way. And so yeah. we're excited to see, hopefully if we're successful and we're able to unlock this audience of filmmaking enthusiasts yeah. um, and people that find independent cinema exciting, then they will start to go to these other film festivals that are in other pockets of our state. Um, so I think it's, it's really, a you know, a rising tide raises right. all ships. That's our mentality yeah. with it. So was there a lot of things that, um, you were kind of like surprised with about like some of the entries or did they all kind of like fall under? Cause I, I know, cause I looked at the categories. I was ready to yep. like, I was ready to like, I dove when you announced the website and everything, yeah. I was like, boom, I'm in there. <laughs> nice. And, but, um, you know, you have your categories, you have mm -hmm. your different, you know, specifications. D was it still um, kind of like surprising to see some of the stories that was being told that, that it was like, um, and stuff? I mean, the first year, so last year was our first year and the, the submissions we got for the short films were incredible. And then on top of that, we showed four feature films. And like, I don't think a lot of people realize how much talent were in those four feature yeah. films. I mean, like you have Emmy nominees, Emmy winners, Academy Award nominees, like you have the know. top of the top filmmaking yeah. group in these, you know, telling these different beautiful stories in their own way and through their own lens. And like, so across the board, I think it was really exciting to see it get kicked off that way. Um, you had a lot of like short film and a lot of talent there. And then, to kind of cap it off with these like four feature films that we showed. Um, I think it really kicked off an exciting thing. And then this year, um, uh, we almost doubled our submissions. And then, so last year, I think we showed around 35 ish films in the festival. And this year we're showing close to 50 oh, and wow. we had to trim off some that we really wanted to show. And so that just shows from year one to year two, yeah. like how big of a jump like we've had. And, I, like the quality of the films, the creativity of the films, like it's so inspiring. I think that's what I love about it is being able to see how people view their story and their area and their state and the region of Appalachia. Like it's so interesting to see all yeah. that coalesce into one event. And then, and then, so are you guys like judged? And then uh, do you like win a prize or like how does like, Yes. Or is it just more like bragging rights? No, no. So it's it's a pretty typical film festival style. So we have submission a submission period, um, and then inside that submission period, you know, you have an, initially the um, the category of like Appalachian films. So it either right. had to be made in Appalachia, by an Appalachian, or have those Appalachian heritage uh, themes. And then once somebody submits, there is category. So it I think like there's documentary, there's music video. Um, there's a feature film category. So there's all these different categories that you can submit based on yeah. what type of film you create. And then once we submissions closed, which they closed a, a couple weeks ago for us, um, our internal team went through and went through all the films and watched them all. There's um, watching. Yeah, this, mo mostly, yeah. Uh, shout out Jeff Bogus here, the <laughs> festival director, um, watched a ton of films and really <laughs> critiqued them and like yeah. went through and built out a schedule that we felt like was the best of the best for okay. the festival. Then once that's done and that's locked, those are our official selections. So those are the films that get selected to be in the festival. Yeah. Um, and then once we have those, we hand them off to a panel of judges. Um, and all of the films are judged by people that are not inside mountain craft. Right. And so, so that was really important for us because year one, 
a, a couple of the films, like one of the films I directed won an award and a, film, a couple other films and that we had some comments about yeah. like, oh, you know, you can't do that or, the, yeah. you know, and yeah. I really want people to understand that these are judged by independent judges that are not part of Mountain Craft at all. Yeah. Um, and if they had some connection to a film, they recuse themselves from judging that film yeah. as well. So we try to make it as transparent and as like but uh, you see, above board as possible. You fixed that in the first year though. I think it's yeah. like, that's something that if this is the 15th year yeah. and you're doing the same thing right. and you've won 10 awards, like right. it's just, well, and I like, we like, still had the judging process year one. Yeah. I think some people just were like, it's not fair that yeah. like mountain craft, but you got unfortunately somewhere. when we're not all part of mountain craft, we're all doing films yeah. and we're all a part of things. So yeah. it's just like, it's going to be a thing that's going to happen. But what we tried to do this year specifically is like talk about the judging process yeah. and talk about how transparent and how out of our hands it is. We don't control it. We don't have anything to do with it. That's we good. hand it to these yeah. judges. They hand us back the their scores. And then from there, we do have awards. So we'll have a, an award for each category. And then during the festival, you will have an opportunity to vote for audience choice. Yeah. So um, after each block, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to set it up, but there will be an in-theater voting process for you know audience choice yeah. awards. So we'll have best of, audience choice, and then a new award that we're introducing this year is, um, man, I think it's the Mountain Craft Award. Maybe don't put this in here. Yeah. <laughs> a, a new award that, new we're, award, that yeah. we're introducing to the festival this year is the Best of West Virginia. So it will be a film that's made in yeah. West Virginia and by a West Virginian. Gotcha. Um, and so it's just kind of another fun little like nod to our home state. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so it's, it's a pretty typical festival like format. Um, but yeah, at the end, people will get uh, awards, uh, both physically and cash prizes. Yeah. So yeah. So when we talking, we're we're talking. Uh, it's at the Robinson Grand. It's at the Robinson Grand, downtown Clarksburg, yeah. West Virginia. Um, it'll be October third through the sixth, and so that's a span of four days. And you need to stop. No, I want to know if I'm available that day. I'll okay. Look for <laughs> my, for nice. my phone. I know the because the fifth is a uh, Saturday. Yep. Six. I'm about to, yeah, okay. Anyway, so, yeah, keep, yeah, keep, yeah, keep yeah. plugging yourself. So, so the so, October, yeah, yeah, Robinson Grand Performing Arts Center, downtown Clarksburg, October 3rd through the 6th. Um, it's a span of four days. So the third is a Thursday, and that's going to be our kickoff screening of Ambrosia, which is a feature film that was filmed in Beckley yeah. um, that we had a lot of uh, involvement in, and we're super excited to be yeah. showing that on the big screen. So it'll be the premiere event of that, and then we'll have like a network mingling kind of thing to, that'll be Thursday evening. And then Friday and Saturday will be full on film screenings. So we'll have film screenings all day. And then on top of that, a new thing that we're adding this year is um, panels and workshops. So we'll have two panels during Very the film cool. festival this year. One um, is called Break Breaking Boundaries, and it's all female filmmakers um, from across Appalachia, but you know, just from across different walks of life. Um, one of them works at Disney. One of them is uh, an Academy Award nominated. Uh, yeah. One of them is Emmy nominated. Like they're just this ultra talented group of people yeah. um, that's going to talk about, you know, some of the challenges that they faced um, being in the film industry and the boundaries they break. Yeah. Um, and then the other panel is just filmmaking in Appalachia. And it's going to be comprised of um, the Pittsburgh Film Office, the West Virginia Film Office, um, the Division of Arts, Culture and History, um, the West Virginia Humanities Council. And the goal for that panel, I'm hoping, is this conversation of like, filmmakers asking how do i get my film funded yeah. what grants are available what yeah. arts grants are available for somebody like me um so hopefully it's a very you know uh entertaining but also educational yeah. panel um and then we have a few uh workshops specifically with single people we have an acting workshop we have a special effects workshop we have a um oh what's it called it's it's also special effects but it's more uh it's more tangible. He he creates monsters and like yeah. does a lot of stuff like for like horror films. Like that, it's not right? CGI. It's like in real life. Oh. He'll create real life. Oh yeah, monsters. yeah, yeah. Like so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it is it is special effects, but kind of in a different vein, like makeup effects and stuff like that. And well, or, and building monsters and prosthetics yeah. and like yeah. all that stuff. He's super talented. Um, and then we're gonna have a presentation from Red Digital Cinema. They're gonna send a, somebody out uh, to pr present about yeah. their cameras and talk about their lineup. 
Um, and yeah, so it's like, it's a really cool mix Friday and Saturday of all of that stuff. Sorry, I kind of got in the weeds there, no, but no, that's, no. that's Friday, Saturday. And then Sunday, which is the sixth, which is our ending. Um, we're going to have a networking event in the morning, which is like a brunch for industry people, bring your resume, bring your business cards, hang out, talk shop. And then we are going to be screening come and save me and electric Jesus, which is a music video and a, a feature film that was made by a filmmaker out of South Carolina. And so we're gonna show those films and then the musical geniuses behind both of those films are gonna perform an acoustic oh, strip cool. down set. And then we're gonna do a Q and A. So like, Dude, just that's a so cool. full weekend yeah. packed. And then on the side, obviously food trucks, art yeah. gallery again, vendor village, like all that. So like a full weekend of films and talking and hanging out and networking yeah. and just art and filmmaking. It's gonna be awesome. Dude, I, I could freaking, kiss you how proud i am of you right now this it's is exciting just, it's just uh yeah i think the only day i have a pending uh wedding right now on the fifth nice. but i think the rest of those days cool you're gonna probably have well, the other three days are packed yeah, so you'll be good yeah i yeah. know um which the f uh yeah i just uh that's awesome, man. I, I got so much, like, so many things that, because uh, I think it's a lot different. It's like when you're doing, like, filmmaking or you're doing, like, just video mm -hmm. in general. Like, this is a whole different, those those type of artists, like, is it, I don't know anything about. So, yeah. like, yeah. someone like me walking in the door, I'm just like, okay, like. I'm, I don't know where to go to first. It's yep. like, it's really cool to kind of like see there's so many options yeah. of things well, to talk and learn about. Yeah. And it's neat too, because like you as a photographer, like you might not realize that you could do behind the scenes photos yes. for a production like that. Yeah. So that's another thing that we really, really want to push with this festival is we want it to be this creative connection point. We yeah. want it to be a hub where people yeah. come from all walks of the creative world and learn from each other, network with each other, collab with each other, and like just generally open up because filmmaking is such a, it's such a, uh, a manufacturing process. Like it's an art, but it's manufacturing. Like you, you have all this time spent planning. You have all this time spent fundraising. You have all this time spent on set. You have all this time spent in post-production and getting the film out and yeah. promotion. So it's like, it's this huge all encompassing process that touches a lot of different creative points along its lifespan. And so to bring these films to the screen and obviously uplift the filmmakers and give them a chance to bask in the glory of people seeing all their hard work, but then also to provide that back end of like networking and collaboration. Yeah. Like we want it to be uh, the total package. We yeah. want it to be educational and informative, but also like this networking, you know, connectivity hub. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Yeah, so I'm excited. Fun. It's going to yeah. be fun. Yeah, Ben, so it's been great just to kind of like sit down and chat with you and stuff and learn more about the festival, learn more about Mountain Craft and yeah. everything. Um, I always kind of take this in, ending part and stuff too. It's like, um, is there any creatives that you just want to like kind of like shout out or any advice that you want to give to people that is just kind of like learning uh, filmmaking in general and some things that you've learned the way? Um, I always like to try to like, give this opportunity and the whole podcast as a whole is kind of like based on, you know, putting people on a platform and, right. and stuff. So like, yeah, well, I mean, I, I think for me, the collaborative and the collaboration has always been a huge thing. Um, because when I first started in filmmaking, you know, it, it didn't feel very collaborative. It felt like kind of everybody was in their own pocket. And so to see, you know, these companies emerge and I'll, I'll shout out a few, like there's impact agency in Huntington. They do beautiful work. They're an agency and they do video production. Um, you've got the Folkway in Fayetteville that produce some of the most beautiful outdoor films and they do a lot of tourism stuff. The green brothers are so talented. Um, and then you have people like Parker Shepard who you've had on your, on your podcast. Yeah. He's up in Morgantown just doing yeah. mind blowing, uh, drone work. He's gone now. Did he, you see where oh he, yeah, he moved? That's right. I, mean, he I texted but, him. Well, I was like, he, he was in West Virginia, yeah, yeah. but like, he yeah, said, I'm still, I'm going to claim him for a very long time. Yes. Stuff, yeah. But. but like he's doing good stuff even when he was here and then, um, you know, and then you have people in Charleston like film and addicts and like, yeah. so you have these pockets of really super talented filmmakers and I, I you know I just love 
knowing all these people and communicating with them and networking with them and seeing them grow, you know, because yeah. again, when I started, it didn't feel like that in the industry. Um, it felt very like holding everything close to the chest, but like I'm friends with most of the people that I just mentioned, um, talk to them on a regular basis, work with some of them. And so like, I just want to shout out that community and shout out those people like you that are, you know, continuing to push this narrative that like we can collaborate, we can be friends, we can work together. Um, it does not need to be this competitive landscape of like holding people off, you know, and, and even like from a business standpoint, like a good friend of mine, JD Belcher, who owns JJ and multimedia, um, you know, he's been somebody that I've talked to and like, we do very similar stuff. Um, but it's never been that like competitive aspect. It's always been like, Hey, let's get together and chat about business and about life and about this and about that. And like, I think the more that we can encourage that type of dialogue and encourage that type of community to keep growing, I think everybody wins. Yeah. Like honestly, yeah. at the end of the day, um, I think the more collaboration we can have, the better it's going to be for yeah. the entire industry. I think too, honestly, like our history, just your, yours and I, like the first time we met each other, we met at a Starbucks and we just yeah. kind of like chatted for like an hour right. or so. And we are just like, and I didn't know you, you didn't know me. No. Like we just were like, Hey, let's just take a chance and let's just talk. Let's yeah. just see. And uh, I, I know I remember telling my wife, I was like, I'm going to meet this guy. I don't know what's going about, but I feel like this is a great this networking opportunity. Yeah. And then I think it was like a couple, like a month or so. It wasn't very long. Right. Um, my camera, the shutter on it, I had a Mark II yep. shutter on it broke and I posted about it and then people was sharing it and then you hit me up. He's like, hey, I got, I got, you know, I think it was, I forget which I think it was, it was a Mark II. I think it was yeah. as well. And yeah. then I was like, I'll just give it to you like for 400. Yep. And I was like, do we still do payments on it? And he was like, yeah, whatever, get you back on your feet. Yep. I was like, that was the first moment of, I think, compassion I felt from another creative yep. since doing it. Like wow. art and That's stuff. That's awesome. Because I was just like, I'm, I'm back in it. I'm yep. back in the game. Right. The, he could have never sent me a message or anything yep. like that. And it was great. I was able to get right into it. And then, just kind of like move on from there and stuff. And then I tell that to people all the time. I was like, Oh no, I know Ben. Yeah. 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 It's all good. <laughs> but it's like, and then we've worked on like, you know, on the yeah. professional side of things. Right. I try to shout you out as much as possible too. Yeah. Cause it's like, you know, um, like one of your guys is that, that works and stuff. Christian, like mm-hmm. he was an intern at tourism. Yeah. Yep. Like whenever I saw that, I was like, Oh, yep. great hire. Yep. Like that's good. And stuff. Yep. but it's just like, I love, that's the part of West Virginia. I love is like, you have those small, connections you know it takes zero dollars to be kind to one another it takes zero dollars to you know share a facebook post Mm -hmm. you know just you know have a conversation have a conversation yes and you know it goes so far and i think um you know there's when you're doing it for a certain amount of time you can you can really tell when somebody is trying to be a little bit more uh you know, evil with their intent. <laughs> right. Um, and then you realize you're like, ah, okay. And then you just kind of like shut it off you yep. know, and, and don't, you know, kind of like fuel the fire and stuff, but like, um, it'll happen to everybody. And I think it's just like the best advice I try to give like any like creatives coming out. It's just like, you know, don't compare yourself to somebody because their journey is completely different than yours. Yep. You just started you're not going to get the same type of work as somebody that's been doing it for eight, nine yep, years. Right. Doesn't mean you won't ever get there. Yeah. But you have to like understand that there's education. They've been shooting nonstop, you right. know, and there's just, they've dealt with bad clients. They've dealt with good clients. Yep. They've dealt with shoots. They, they have great lighting, bad yep. lighting, you know, they, right. they go through it. That's the reason why they are today. Yeah. I mean, I just see it with my own work of like editing, like I'm editing now in this like warmer tones, Two years ago, I wouldn't even touch that. Yep. You know, I'm just, yeah. and, but now I'm just kind of like vibing with it and it's working yep. and I'm liking it. But who yeah. knows what next two years, I might go super light and airy. I have right. no idea. Yeah, I but, think to your point about the comparisons, like when you're comparing yourself negatively, like I'm not yeah. this, I'm not that. Like there's a quote, comparison is the thief of joy. Yes. And like that is such a crucial thing. Like you, you've got to focus on your business journey. You've got to focus on your business or whatever you've got going on. Like do not compare yourself to other people you don't know what they went through you don't know how they got to where they got and i guess my my encouragement to people that are starting a business there's a book 
um, called How to Fly a Horse. I can't think of the author right now, but basically the premise of the book is that overnight success is a myth. There's no such thing as overnight success. And if you look at anybody who's ever been successful, there are years in a garage working. There are years spent at, you know, working a nine to five job where they were developing, like nobody has ever been an overnight success. Like that's not, that doesn't exist like yeah. that. People that have something that is a solid business or a solid product or a solid brand, they spent a lot of time that you didn't see failing, not making it barely making it, thinking they were going to quit, like you know, tough times. So like definitely focus on what you've got going on and focus on like the day to day and focus on the next step. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. And even I, I started telling people like I've, I've quit trying to imagine when I'm going to get my big break. Cause I don't even think that exists. Like yeah. your big break happens because you put in the work. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I encourage anybody that's in a creative business or just in a business entrepreneur or whatever, like focus on what you can control, focus on the day to day, focus on, you know, this week, focus on yourself. Don't necessarily look out and get discouraged at what other people are doing better than you or b doing more than you. Like, you know, just focus, focus inward and, and really like, you know, keep your head down, do the hard work and you know, there are, I think there is some, something to like being in the right place at the right time. But like, I generally think hard work will equal a successful venture. Yeah. Well, Ben, it has been an amazing conversation. It's always great to sit down with you and chat, just Heck learn yeah. from each other and, uh, go ahead and plug your film festival one more time. Perfect. That way we have a good sound bite on it and stuff. Definitely. Uh, let people know they can get tickets yep. on it and yep. stuff. Passes. Yeah. So yep. Mountain Craft Film Festival, October 3rd through the 6th. Uh, Robinson Graham Performing Arts Center in downtown Clarksburg. Um, passes are on sale. You can either go to our website um, and go through uh, that way or go directly to, you can search the Robinson Graham Performing Arts Center and their website. Um, the passes are available and we're selling like all access passes. So you buy one pass and you get available or you can get entry into any of the events happening in the third through the sixth during the film festival. So really cool. please come out and join us. Like. Yeah. You do not have to be a filmmaker. You don't even have to be a creative. Um, just come and experience all the hard work that these filmmakers have put in. Come experience the art. Come experience the camaraderie, the collaboration. Like, just come hang out and experience what a film festival is. Yeah, I'm looking super forward to it. I think I'm available, like, the first half of it. So I definitely want to try to go up there and support. Also, like, I've been wanting to just go up there and to support, like, Jared's studio as yeah. well. Well, Jared, um, he'll be helping out with the yeah. art gallery. So he, him and his students, two for he, one special. Yep. yep. There's, it's a whole, it's a whole effort. And then Joel yeah. Dugan painted our uh, festival poster. And then he's also helping with the, the art uh, gallery. And so like the, it, the film festival would not happen without a village of creatives. Right. I'm so thankful for the community. Um, even people like you supporting it from afar, people like Jason Young being an active contributor and Joel Dugan and Jared and like all these people, um, we couldn't do it without the community. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, like I said, it's been great. Um, all of those links that he's talking about, uh, including mountain craft, uh, all those links are going to be in the description below. So make sure you guys go check that out. Uh, give him some love on all the social medias as well. Um, as always, this podcast is sponsored by Megan Nicole photography. Uh, if you're looking to do mommy and me sessions, if you're looking to do boudoir maternity, she's definitely your photographer here in the Charleston area. Make sure you go show her love. All those links is going to be located in the description below. As always, guys, never stop creating and stay safe, and we'll see you in the next.